So we welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri class on Bhagavad Gita. I think this is lesson number five. Okay, lesson five. So is everyone able to see the screen, the PowerPoints? Yes, Maharaj. You're okay? You can see it? Good. Okay. So lesson five, entitled Karma Yoga, superior to Karma Sanyas. Karma Sanyas means renounce all work, right? Don't do anything. Just sit. Stop everything. So, we're going to hear about this today from Srila Prabhupada. Lesson 5, Dharma and Sense Control. We didn't see for a week, so we have a review. We have an overview first of all. Or we, last week we had the overview of Krishna's instructions on Gyan, right? That was the basic knowledge of the difference between the body and the soul. The body is like a dress, just as we change the body, we change the dress. We shouldn't be attached. For the soul there's no birth and death, but the body takes birth and dies. That's, uh, these kind of things were discussed. So that was there in uh, the first section. But then we talked about Krishna's response to Arjuna's first three reasons for not fighting. Who remembers first the three reasons for not fighting? Kohan Prabhu, can you tell me one reason Arjuna had for not fighting? Kohan, one reason for not fighting. Anthony Prabhu, I'm not able to hear anybody. Is anybody there? I see your name. Is Maharaj' voice is clear? I'm not able to call you. I'm not hearing any audio here. Hearing what I'm saying, but you're breaking off. My my voice my voice is breaking. Where are you? He's from Guyana, Maharaj. Oh, Guyana. Okay, so I could understand. Might be difficult. What about Kohan Prabhu? Where are you? Russia. Kohan uh, Prabhu, are you able to hear? Uh, the internet connection is not very good today, is it? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, but for me it looks like your internet connection is good. I can able to hear you properly. Okay. So can you give us uh, some reasons Arjuna had for not fighting? Oh, it's me Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, the first one, if I remember correctly, compassion. And the second one, uh, enjoyment. Yes. And the third one, uh, he is fearful of sinful reactions. Right, right. The fourth one, uh, it probably destruction of the uh, family dynasty. Yes, very good, right. And then we had Arjuna's, uh, Krishna's response to three of the reasons. How did Krishna respond to his compassion? Maybe we'll ask somebody else. Amataji? Knowledge. Yes, knowledge, right. He defeated the, the, which one? By knowledge? Compassion. Right. He defeated compassion by giving knowledge of the eternal nature of the soul. Yes. 
And then, how did he defeat the idea of enjoyment? Yes, can you explain more? Prabhuji, I can explain. The Karam Kanda actions run for enjoyment and power, spiritual ceremonies and satisfy mind and body. So what does Arjuna need to do? Right? What if what if Arjuna fights and gets killed in the battle? Will he enjoy? No. Yes, he'll go to heavenly planets, right? And if he wins the kingdom, will he enjoy? Yes. Yes, Lord. And if he doesn't fight, will he enjoy? No more. No more. Right. Okay. And what about sinful reactions? How did... Uh, it is that uh, buddhi yoga... Or karma Yoga Maharaj. Yes, right. By Buddhi Yoga or Karma Yoga. What's the principle behind Karma Yoga or Buddhi Yoga? Why is there no sinful reactions? Because he'll be performing his duty anyways, so he will not be getting sinful reactions. So how do, in what manner does he perform his duty? Um, he has to fight as a spirit of Kshatriya, so yeah, if he thinks in bodily concept also he has to fight and if he's thinking as about soul anyways they will not be killed so both like so the 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 main point is in karma yoga or buddhi yoga there must be detachment from the result from the result you don't just do it for enjoyment for our own benefit there has to be some detachment there. That's important. To get the benefit of Buddha Yoga, it means you work, but in a detached way. So the attitude is very important. Two people may do the same activities, but they do them in a very different consciousness. One person is very attached, and the other person may be detached. So it's very different response. The benefits they get will be very different. Because one's so attached and the other person's not attached. All right, then we talked, we had the summary of the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And we talked, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had told that the second chapter summarizes the contents of the entire Gita. Why would the second chapter summarize the contents of the Gita? Someone? You remember? May I remember? Yes, Archana. Because uh, it's, have, it's explained about karma yoga, jnana yoga, and buddhi yoga. Yes, right. The different yogas are all mentioned there in the second chapter. And the summary of the Bhagavad Gita, how did the second chapter begin? Arjuna surrendered himself. Uh, Arjuna asked Krishna to be his guru. Yes, and right. He... Arjuna surrenders to Krishna. And then next? What's next? After that, after Arjuna surrenders, what does Krishna do? What does he teach? And he first starts teaching about the knowledge of the body and the soul. Right. And after he teaches that, then what does he teach? About uh, duty. He should perform his duty and should not be attached to the
Can, can somebody just turn off their mic? If you have that Govinda prayers going on in your place, you could turn off your mic. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we ha but Krishna then also, after explaining the knowledge of the body and the soul, then Krishna introduced about karma kanda that he could enjoy. All right? And then after karma kanda, then we had the, the buddhi yoga, performing duty in a detached way. Right? And then at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, there's a section about the the Stita Dir Muni, and we'll be looking at that today. So we also, last week we also spoke about Karmakanda division of the Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness, but then it's not relevant to the practice of Krishna consciousness. Karmakanda is for sense gratification, for material sense gratification. So Krishna spoke about it for a little bit, but then he brought the conversation to a higher level and he spoke about buddhi yoga. And buddhi yoga is on, a, on the transcendental platform, but karmakanda is material. So why did Krishna speak it? He just wanted to encourage those people who are materialistic that you can benefit by doing your duty. And then we, at the end of the class, we spoke about these two verses, pradyavayo navidyate and vaya vasayatmika buddhi, about the significance of these things. A little advancement made can save us from the greatest danger, and vaya vasayat, being very focused, fully focused on our service to Krishna. All right, so. Here's the overview of the Bhagavad Gita, right? Stita Dirmuni. So, good. You know these things. You've learned this. It's very good. So, Ar Arjuna's three arguments were defeated: compassion, enjoyment, and sinful reactions. We'll go ahead. Right? Who would like to read the verse for us? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I will try. Please. Arjuna Vacha, Stita Pagna Sekaka Bhaksha, Samadhi Stasya Keshava, Stita Dikim Prabha Seta, Kim Asita, Rajeta Kim. Yes, very good. The Stita verse, right? The Stita, Stita Pragna. Stita pragna. Stita means situated. Pra, complete, and na, knowledge. So one who is situated in complete knowledge. Right? Somebody is stita pragna, he's got complete knowledge. Knowledge means knowledge about the soul and the difference between the soul and the body. Now someone may know they're not the body, they know I'm a soul, so that's a bit of knowledge but still not complete. Stita Pragna not only knows that he's not the body but he understands also the relationship between the soul and the super soul, that within the body there's another soul and that is the Supreme Lord whose ex expansion is in the heart of all living entities. So the Stita Pragna understands his position as the servant of the Supreme Lord. That is actually Stita Pragna. Some people, they're, you know, the impersonalist, Mayavadis, they, they simply know they're not the body, they're the soul. But they don't distinguish between the soul and the super soul. So Arjuna wants to hear about this person who is stita pragna, right? Stita pragna. How does he, Arjuna is asking, how does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? Arjuna wants to, he's asking this question for our benefit. How we can recognize such a person who is stita pragna. This is text 254. 
O oh Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence? How does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? And so we should understand when Arjuna is asking this, how does he speak and what is his language? He's not asking, you know, does he speak Hindi or is it Bengali or is it English? Not like that, but he wants to understand what is his manner in speaking. Does he get angry? Does he yell and shout? And is he emotional? <laughs> he wants to understand this kind of thing. And how does he sit means how does he behave when he's not using his senses? How does he walk means how does he act when he's actually doing things, when he's active? So in this way we want to understand these, these different symptoms. The symptoms are very important. By symptoms we can recognize someone to be in transcendental consciousness. So what symptoms? Prabhupada talks, which one is most important? Yes? How does he, how does he speak? Yes. Why is it most important? Because whatever he speaks, it comes from his mind, from his heart, directly. Oh, okay. Any other reason? We, we could say if he does... If, always in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, if a person doesn't speak, then what does it tell us? What do we know about him? If someone doesn't speak, do you know anything? Can you understand him? Do you know anything about him? No. no. Right, right. Yeah. Prabhupada said, once a person speaks, then you can understand more about the person. What is he like? What's his nature? Until they speak, we won't know if he's a fool or if he's a genius. You won't know what is in, in, in he's like. And so the speaking is important. <laughs> in, in Prabhupada's time, there was one uh, prominent sadhu and he would tell people that those who speak don't know and those who know don't speak. So the dev devotee told this to Prabhupada. He, he said, this devotee, this uh, sadhu, he says, those who speak don't know and those who know don't speak. So Prabhupada said to the devotee, he said, so why is he speaking? <laughs> if he, you know, if he, he does, if he, if he's speaking, he's saying this. It means he doesn't know. So what's the value of this? <laughs> it's so nonsense philosophy. There's so many nonsense statements going on, and Prabhupada also saw when Prabhupada was in the airport. He would see people, you know, they look very nice, they're dressed up, they're businessmen, you know, they've got good suits on and collar and tie. But then he would hear them speak and he would hear them speak and he could understand from their speaking that they were men of the lowest character. You know, they'd speak about their cigarettes or their alcohol or so many other disgusting things. And so. When, when people speak, then you can understand more about their actual nature. So the, it's one of the symptoms by which we can recognize somebody who is in transcendence. Somebody who is actually in transcendence, they will speak about Krishna. So Krishna replies, uh, first of all, text 55, Arjuna's question was 54, so Krishna replies, text 55, you get the symptoms, the first of all, overall symptoms, and then text 56 to 57 will describe about how he speaks, 
And then 58 to 63 will describe to us how he sits. And finally, 64 to the end of the chapter, almost 72, how he walks. Right? And so the different uh, points are all answered by Lord Krishna. First of all, 55 describing the symptoms of a person in transcendental consciousness. Hmm. That one in transcendental consciousness actually has no desire for sense gratification. All right, so you, you make a note of these things. It's, it helps us to understand the flow of the chapter. The acharyas are explaining these things for our benefit so that we can understand more clearly Krishna's response. Srila Prabhupada explains, kabasa, right? His language, speech. Does someone like to read for us? Hare Krishna Prabhupada, may I? Please. Uh, speech is the most important quality of a man. He said that a fool is undiscovered as long as he does not speak. And certainly, a well-dressed fool cannot be identified unless he speaks. <laughs> right. Prabhupada's using the well-dressed fool, right? So, Prabhupada saw in the airports, you know, people very well-dressed. But as soon as they speak, you can understand what is their nature. <laughs> so, well-dressed fool. Hmm. A fool is undiscovered. He doesn't speak. You just keep quiet. Nobody knows where you're at. They don't know your nature. And so the speech is very important quality. And we see when people want to hire someone for a job, you know, they will have the interview. And they want to see how does the person speak? How does he respond? And it's the purpose of interviewing people for employment. They want to take someone in. They want to know how, they, how do they speak. Very important for people. Yes, someone else can read? Yeah, Prabhuja, I'll read. <coughs> Stita Prajna, accept all miseries and the mercy of the Lord, thinking himself only worthy, more more worthy of more trouble due to his past misdeeds. And he sees that his misdeeds, by the grace of the Lord, are minimized to the lowest. Similarly, when he, ha when he is happy, he gives credit to the Lord, thinking himself unworthy of the happiness. So, what did we say? What's the meaning of sthita pragna? Do you remember? Prabhu who read? Sthita pragna means? Mm. Prabhu, who read? Yeah. Stita, yeah, Prabhu. What does it mean, sthita pragna? He is always one who is always in Krishna consciousness and who surpasses and who has surpasses stages of mental speculation. Yes. And one who is not disturbed even in the midst of the three well, well, remember, look when we when we showed the we showed the the meaning, right? We, stita pragna, stita situated, and pra complete, gya knowledge. So stita pragna, situated in complete knowledge, right? This is what we. The, no, of course, complete knowledge means situated in Krishna consciousness. Okay, but. The literal meaning of sthita pragna, one who is situated in complete knowledge. So Prabhupada explains here, what is the thinking of a devotee? That the devotee accepts all the difficulties, the miseries, the mercy of Krishna. Thinks, I'm meant to suffer more, but Krishna is reducing them by his grace. 
so this this is the point krishna is saving us from a lot of suffering somehow for some reason krishna is kind to us and he's reduced our suffering we could suffer much more than we are but krishna has reduced the suffering and when we're happy we don't deserve so much happiness but krishna is just trying to encourage us so this is the point the devotee sees a hand of krishna in everything one who is in proper knowledge he will see that is krishna's mercy by krishna's mercy i'm in this miserable condition it could be much worse and when i'm happy it's also krishna's mercy i don't deserve it just krishna's kindness so that is the meaning of sthita pragna situated in knowledge then kim asita how does he sit how does he sit when he, in other words when you don't use your senses mentally withdrawing the senses so how does a devotee behave then prabhupad gives examples um, krishna krishna gives actually krishna is giving the example in bhagavad gita he talks about the tortoise or the turtle you can see it swimming in the sea the big turtles they have their arms and legs they're swimming around right but then sometimes they will come on the shore and they bring their hands and legs in under the shell then they simply sit there they would withdraw the senses right just like you know sometimes we expand the arms and stretch the, out the arms right and then you bring the arms back in to the chest right and withdraw them under the shell and then expand and, and then you breathe in and expand the chest and breathe in fully and then you bring the hands over the chest and breathe out like that and so withdrawing the senses we have to we have to be able to withdraw the sense and but in our practice of yoga we have to control the senses very important right as devotees we have to be able to control the senses sometimes we have to use our senses and we have to also be able to withdraw the senses so the nice analogy is given here about the tortoise or the turtle how they when they're in the water they're swimming they're using their legs and arms swim but when they come up on shore and they just want to sit one place on the shore their their limbs are withdrawn into the shell under the shell and so devotee also we're very busy in krishna's service we we use our senses we use our hands to write and to type and our ears to hear but there comes time certain situations we want to withdraw the senses sometimes you may be in you may be in the association of non devotees uh, we may be for example maybe you're traveling in a public bus and there's so many people there so you don't want to hear all the people you don't want to listen to all the things they're talking about we want to withdraw our senses and how do we do that we take shelter of krishna either by chanting his holy name or remembering the glories of krishna maybe we recite a sloka like that we with withdraw ourselves from the external situation and we internalize our consciousness by remembering krishna and krishna's teachings so like that we use our senses for the service of krishna and when we're not using them for the service of krishna we withdraw them we can withdraw them just like we do when we do chanting concentrate on the chanting just remembering krishna prabhupad explains someone like to read krishna 
please. The best example, said Harry, is the tortoise. The tortoise can, at any moment, wind up the senses and exhibit them again at any time for particular purpose, purposes. Similarly, the senses of, cre of the Krishna consciousness persons are used only for some particular purpose in the service of the Lord and are withdrawn otherwise. Right. We have to control the senses. We have to know when to use them and when to withdraw them. Just like you may go to a program and there's a lot of non-vegetarian foodstuffs there. Maybe because of work you may have to do some, have to attend some function. And there may be a lot of non-vegetarian foodstuff. And so of course we withdraw our senses. We don't want to take part. We don't take any of their food. That kind of thing. Another analogy we're given, that the senses are compared to venomous serpents. Venomous serpents, I mean poisonous serpents. So the senses, if they act loosely, then they're like poisonous serpents. If we don't control them carefully, they're not properly controlled, they're just like these poison snakes and they can give a lot of trouble. But here you see the snake charmer. You can see, have you seen these people in India? You would see them, especially in places like Jaipur. You will see the man with the basket. And inside the basket he has these deadly cobras. But he plays his flute. And when he plays his pipe, then the, the snakes come out dancing. So he has them under his control by the sound of his flute playing. So the same way devotee also, we have to control the senses by chanting Hare Krishna. As soon as we chant Hare Krishna, then immediately the senses come back under control. So devotees like the snake charmer, <laughs> right? If we're not controlling our senses, then you have to you have to come become a better snake charmer. You have to learn. We have to practice. Definitely, the devotee should be able to control the senses. When it begins, of course, the most difficult, the tongue, to control the tongue. We use the tongue to chant Hare Krishna and to take prasada. So this is a nice analogy given to us. Mentally, withdraw the senses. When, it's when you sit. Okay, we have now a little exercise for you. We want, from your personal experience, when you try to control the senses unsuccessfully. Yeah, we don't always succeed. Or you forgot about your sense enjoyment entirely. We hope you've had that experience. That would be very nice. You forgot about your sense enjoyment entirely. We want, oh, okay, wait, we'll go back. So, we'd like you to discuss like that. Somehow, if you can get a partner. How many people are here today? How many people are in the yes, class? Sir, 21, 20, oh, sorry, 19. 19. 19. Okay, so 19. So then, one group, of, one group will be three people. And others will be twos. Can you could you do that, Prabhu Yagam? Can you get partners for people? Can, can you repeat it again, Maharaj? Uh, can you can you can you repeat it again, Maharaj? What what I want you to do? I want you to put uh, no partners, twos, pairs. And one group of three. Okay. 
So give each, give each person a partner and let them discuss their personal experience. Okay, I'm opening the rooms, Maharaj. Thank you. Sita Nath Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So we have to discuss. We too have to discuss. Yeah. For the two, as a, once we are successful and when we are not successful. Yes. So I'll start. Yes, yes. There was a. Uh, Few years back, I was the, uh, new to Krishna consciousness, and I have a I am talkative, very much talkative. So, um, especially with opposite sex, uh, Matajis, that time, I was like uh, in my early twenties when I joined. So I uh, I just in my office we do have uh, our colleague, female colleagues. So I was not that much uh, good, uh, strong in my regulative principle at that time. So. I just always see um, the chance to mingle with opposite sex and you know sometimes talking about movies and sometimes about my career, my studies. So in that way I was I just always slipped in my regulative principles. So and after some year of Krishna Moshe study practice and I was able to control that thing. Devotees, that, that was a time when I'm the successful part. Yeah. So after the Diksha and the I think ceremony, you have stopped everything. You started controlling your senses. No, from but at least uh, mingling with uh, with opposite sex is uh, grossly it's uh, minimized. But there are some subtle things are going. So that's it's my. Uh, I'll, oh, thanks Prabhuji. Okay, it's okay. And I'll share my experience uh, before coming into, before taking Diksha, because I took Diksha in 2017. Before that, you know, I used to drink also, I used to, you know, uh, take non veg and all, everything, you know, I was enjoying everything. And that time, you know, I was, uh, you know, difficult to control because, because, because my office colleagues and friends, they used to drink. So I also used to drink. But after Diksha, you know, uh, and you know, uh, after coming to Krishna consciousness, this slowly, slowly, it was a very difficult process. Then, you, then you know, I slowly, slowly, I stopped uh, everything now because like recently I have been to one marriage party also where there was a non veg and everything was there. So I controlled my senses. I said, no, I will not eat anything because somewhere I heard that you can. Where Prabhupada said, whenever you are going to any party or anything. Try to take uh, sweets like you know milk and all, which is uh, you know, which is which we, we can take milk and salads also. So that I started taking and best thing what I did, I you know, before going to the marriage party and dinner, I ate something at home. So you know, I this way I controlled my senses. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, that's a nice nice example. Thank you, Thank you Maharaj. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Maharaj, we can. Yes. Do we have to leave the room or should we continue? Uh, yeah, I'll just find out. I'll just give me one minute. Just let me see what if everybody's ready. Hari Bal, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Yagna.
Yajnaprabhu. Yajna. Yajna. Hare Krishna, everyone back? No, Maharaj, it's only 78, Maharaj. Huh? Still a few Generally more. Generally, seven. Oh, okay. A few more seconds. Okay, I think everyone's here now. Yeah? Yes, yes, Maharaj. All right, so we'd, we'd like to hear from somebody who would like to share your discussion with us. Ariksha Maharaj, can I go ahead first? Yes, please, Prabhu. Okay, uh, Maharaj, uh, for our group, uh, we had discussion. So the first, for the first question, how we cannot control our senses, we were unsuccessful. Uh, one of the examples I can think of is that uh, because I, I'm working now, so during my workplace, there will be some situations where I will have to get angry and scold at my subordinates or my the people who's working under me. So that is like, I know a devotee shouldn't do that, scold a person unnecessarily or it's not unnecessary, but we shouldn't scold them in that way, but it turned out to be we can't control our anger and let off like this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was one example. Another example I can think of for the first one is the food consumption. I mean, we because we, since we are we are working people, uh, we don't get to eat prasad as often as we are at home. Uh, because when we are out, sometimes we have to go and eat some vegetarian food outside. So that that is the time I can say we also can't control our senses. So for the second item, Maharaj is about the when we forgot uh, completely about a sense of enjoyment is that what I can think of is that uh, there was once uh, during, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was during Radhayatra time uh, that was, I already bought a, book a ticket for a movie on that day to supposed to go and watch for a movie but then uh, since my uh, temple president called me uh, to engage in the service to help him for the cooking so I went there then I totally forgot about the movie <laughs> So I was just engaged in the temple, then totally forgot the, about the movie, and then I just attend the Adhyatma <laughs> instead of going for the movie. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, very good. Yeah, you got a, you had the higher taste. The Rathiyatra attracted you more than the movie. Very good. Yes, Thank, no, Thank you, Prabhu. Very good. And s uh, someone else like to share? We should hear from a marriage group. Kirtida? I also experienced the difficulty with controlling the anger and um, I used to try to use uh, different psychological tricks to control anger. For example, they have different methods, breathing or acting, um, trying to be a friend with him or something like that, but it was unsuccessful. Oh. And um, in Krishna consciousness, Mahamantra helps a lot. I also uh, still have problems with um, controlling the anger, but now I understand that nothing 
could help us access our that Okay. okay. And the, um, did you experience? Get an hour. Did you get a higher taste? Did you get a taste where yes. you? Yes. <laughs> it's very difficult to control our senses, of course. And but when we are engaged in in devotional service, it becomes very easy. Krishna gives. Uh, um, Powers or strength to be with it. For example, when you, there's some big cold festivals, and um, uh, when we um, prepare big feasts, we have to get up early and we um, don't have to, we mustn't eat something, and we cook every the whole day, and even in the evening, we don't feel like we don't feel hunger at all. So it's amazing. <laughs> oh, fa when you fasted, you didn't feel hunger. You service. forgot about your hunger. I'm sorry. Sometimes you you were work. You're so busy working. You're so busy working. You forgot oh, no. about eating. Uh, when we engaged in both in devotional service, I mean, uh, during festivals. We have to prepare something to cook in the um, Krishna kitchen and we make a garland, for example. And usually the devotees usually don't eat. Uh, okay, okay, very good. Thank you. I understand your point. Thank you so much. All right, we just have one more. Someone else like to give us their experience? Krishna Maharaji, can I speak? Yes, please. Yeah, Tanvar Pranam Maharaji. Uh, I want to speak that uh, there are so many senses we have which which is needs to be controlled when we come in Krishna consciousness. Means by doing devotional practices, it gets controlled automatically. We don't have to forcefully do that. Like in case of tongue, we can say tongue is the most important uh, sense which needs to be controlled. If that is controlled, everything, every other senses can be controlled. So the main function of tongue is to eat and uh, to speak as well uh, so when we come to eat when we were not in krishna consciousness we were not um, not known about that uh, krishna consciousness then we used to eat outside food even at the marriage parties office parties also but slowly and slowly when we come to krishna consciousness we come to know the importance of prasad uh, that uh, how important the prasad is there to eat so after coming we i just uh, you means uh, neglect eating on uh, office parties and uh, marriage parties as well because that is not a Krishna prasad or we can just uh, take some what which is uh, without onion garlic food uh, to some extent if someone is forcing us <clears throat> and uh, second one is the function of uh, tongue is to speak as I said so in that way uh, when we were not in Krishna consciousness we used to speak mundane talk so much but slowly and slowly when we come to Krishna consciousness, the level of that mundane talks is decreasing to some extent, but not completely, I can say about me. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, we used to anger, <clears throat> get angry so, uh, so many times earlier, but now also I, I, I got anger, but the level is reduced to some extent. <clears throat> and uh, earlier we were use, using our senses of ear like to uh, hear about the movie songs uh, so but now we hear about the devotional songs that is uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and our eyes we used earlier to watch movies TV serials but now we watch Hare Krishna TV on our TV so that is very much uh, change our uh, uh, life to become Krishna consciousness and to involve in devotional practices I can say okay very good yes very nice. Yeah, we often experience like uh, maybe we have the Christmas marathon and we or the Prabhupada marathon in the month of December and that time we will go out on Sankirtan and we'll spend long hours out there the whole day almost and sometimes very late at night even. And we'll, and we'll do it all, you know, without thinking about how tired or how many hours we've been out there and we do it all because it's just the pleasure of Sankirtan that all the devotees are doing it and there's that mood that we're going to 
do sankirtan and try to distribute as many books as we can for the pleasure of Prabhupada. And so we forget about our own bodily comfort, bodily situation. We just transcend it all because we're, we're, we're getting some taste from thinking that thinking about Prabhupada and the service of Lord Krishna. And that way you can forget about the bodily condition of life. Okay, so getting the higher taste is very important for us, right? We need to have that experience. Okay, we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, if we want to forget sense enjoyment, if we want to give up that desire to enjoy the senses, we have to have that higher taste. And so Krishna explains that in the Bhagavad Gita there, that param dristva nivartate, one who has experienced the higher taste, then he's fixed in consciousness. He's not attracted, right? When, we, when we've relished prasadam, then even you go to these marriage parties, it's all onion and garlic and non-veg. Oh, it's horrible, disgusting. <laughs> you know, to, to the ordinary karmis, meat eaters, they're thinking of very nice but we're thinking just garbage, just horrible. <laughs> we have no attraction. So we forget about that. We have, we've got the higher taste. Krishna Prasada. Srila Prabhupada explains, Param Dristva Nivartate. Right? The supreme taste. So one who has tasted the beauty of the Supreme Lord Krishna in the course of his advancement in Krishna consciousness, no longer has a taste for dead material things. Just like, you know, we often, we're attracted to the opposite sex. The women are looking at the young man, the nice man, and the men are looking at the women. And, but when we see the beauty of Krishna, we see the form of Krishna and the, the deities, then we realize, you know, this is real. The real beauty is there in the form of the deities. The material bodies of the young women, young men, those bodies are just material. They age very quickly. They age, they get diseased and they die. But the the form of the Lord, Lord Krishna and his deities, the gopis and, the, and the Radharani, they're not material. They're not, so they're not dead material things. So we want to see the real beauty, not the beauty of the material body. It's very temporary. Prabhupada wrote that one article, uh, truth or beauty, truth and beauty. Right? It's a very nice article and he talks about the, the beauty of the material world, how it's so temporary. And he tells a story about the young man who wanted, he saw the beautiful woman and he wanted to enjoy her. But the woman said, I'm already married. But the man was saying, no, no, you should enjoy with me. So the young woman was very intelligent. So she said, oh, just give me one week come back after one week. And so the man came back after a week and, and for that one week, the beautiful young woman had been fasting and she'd been taking all kinds of medicine to make her pass loose motions. And she collected all the stools which she'd been passing. Everything which had coming from her body, she collected it in buckets. And so when the, after one week when the man came, she was no longer beautiful, but she'd become very thin and her face was all wrinkled and, and she looked completely different. And the young man came and said, where's that beautiful woman? And she said, well, I'm that woman. And he was shocked. He said, you? Really? He said, where's your beauty? And then she brought him and she showed him all the buckets of the, the stool and urine and everything that she collected. She said, this is my beauty. So that's the nature of material beauty. We have to understand these things and get it. We have to develop a taste for spiritual beauty. 
that is real truth. Okay, we're going on to go on to the, this very important topic that karma yoga is superior to karma sannyas. Now karma yoga, we said, karma yoga means do your duty and be detached from the results. And karma sannyas is don't work, just do nothing, just sit. So some people think that, you know, like they think knowledge is better than work. And they think somebody who has knowledge, they won't work. And they think somebody who who's doesn't work, like karma sannyasi, they think, oh, he's very renounced. But that is not actual renunciation. In Krishna consciousness, we understand that you can work and be renounced. The karma yogi will work, but he's also renounced. He's not attached to the results, right? He's working. That's dif the difference. So we want to understand why is karma yoga superior to karma sannyas? So in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had said, Verse number 5 in the second chapter, described here, Shreyo bhuktam bhaikshyam apihaloke. It would be better to live in this world by begging. Arjuna was saying he would rather go and live by begging than at the lives, than be responsible for taking the lives of great souls like Bhishma and Drona. Now karma sannyasi could beg. He would be allowed to go to live by begging. So Arjuna was thinking, you know, I can, I can become a beggar rather than having to kill these people. Then, 48, someone like to read for us? I will try, Maharaj. Please. Karma Yoga superior to Karma Sanyasa. Yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyakta dhananjaya From your duty equipoids, O Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success are paid. And from Bhagavad Gita 2.48. So what's Lord Krishna saying here? Lord Krishna is saying uh, perform only the duty without uh, attachment of the results. So what is that called? It's called um, karma sannyasa. No, no, that's not karma sannyasa. This, this is karma yoga. Karma sannyasa, you don't do your duty, you don't do anything. You give up all work. But karma yoga is you do your duty and you're not attached to success or failure. You're not attached to the result. Right? This is karma yoga detached work. Karma sannyas, they don't want to work. They won't do any work. They may beg, that's just so they get food to fill the belly. But they don't work. Right? Going ahead. Someone else read? Madhiji? Can I read? Yes. Of the two, work in the devotional service is better than renunciation of the work. Right. Work in devotional service. That's, that is like karma yoga. Karma yoga is very close to devotional service. And karma sannyas, that is renunciation of work, giving up the work. Now, is a devotee renounced? If we do devotional service, are we, can we be renounced? Maharaji? Yes, because whatever we work, uh, we, uh, we keep Krishna in the center. Right. So what is the devotee renounced 
about? Uh, result of the uh, karma. Right, very good, right. The devotee is not attached to the result of the work. We do the work, but we're not attached to the result of the work. Right? But the karma sannyasi, he's renouncing the work. <laughs> he's he's top, not going to do anything, not going to do any work. The devotee will work, but he's not attached to the fruit of the work. That's the difference. So of the two, work in devotional service or karma yoga is better than renunciation of work, which is the karma sannyasa. That's fifth chapter Bhagavad Gita, verse number two. Right? Now we're going to give you a nice exercise here. <laughs> Well, we say, draw images showing reasons why karma yoga is superior to karma sannyas. If you can draw, very nice. If you're not able to draw, then you have to at least list some of the points and write it down clearly. Uh, we want you to show these points in your, in your work. Krishna's statements the Sanskrit verses and phrases, and Prabhupada's statements from the purport, and then try to give examples and, and analogies, right? And we have, we have five different groups, and we have 20 people. So, group Yagna Prabhu? Yes, yes, Maharaj. So, we want five groups. We have 20, okay. 21 people, right? So, about four people in each group. So group one will do 60 to 61, group two, 62 to 63, second chapter this is, and group three will do 67 to 68, group three will do slokas four and five in chapter three, and group five will do slokas six to eight in chapter three. Right? Can I open the rooms, Maharaj, now? Yes. Have yes. everybody got a room? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, I'm in room number five. Okay. Nah. So we'll go back to the question. I just want to show you. Oh. All right, here's the question. Right? We want you to. Sh so we got 3.6 to 8. Okay. Has, has everyone got the, the question? Are you all clear on the question? Yes, good. Uh, board question we have to do. You do one question, 6 to 8, chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. Yes, you have to do both questions. If you can draw images, you, otherwise you have to explain it all. You can do drama if you want. So like in 3.6, uh, it is given, if we start, uh, one who restrains the senses and organs of action, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretend. 
like from here we can pick up oil. Mm-hmm. Like uh, of course I'm making a show of meditation or making a show of Krishna consciousness, but from inside is not following the Krishna consciousness. Mm-hmm. One point it can be taken. <coughs> like a person is showing himself as in using karma yoga, but actually he is doing karma sannyas, not performing activity, on taking the advantage of Krishna consciousness. Mm-hmm. Like I will not do any material activity because like uh, I am Krishna. Shloka. Explain because uh, you know better because you are speaking now. Maybe I missed some point in that case. Okay. Okay. So the last point also here says about uh, how uh, Durvasa Muni, uh, I mean Amrish Maharaj and Durvasa Muni uh, uh, actually uh, showed uh, different characteristics in Yavanacharya. There are two examples also given in that purport, Madhaji. Parsati Prabhu. Hi, Bol. Parsati Prabhu cannot hear you. You're mute. I was thinking, these two verses are dealing with sense control. I'm not getting, but how they are thinking with this karma sannyas and Karma Yoga. No, no, actually the point is like uh, even even to do work we have to engage our senses. But the uh, but person who is not Krishna conscious, he eh, is not Krishna conscious, will obviously look for sense gratification even in that work. But okay. a person who is uh, Krishna conscious, okay. he'll just do that because uh, like Srila Prabhupada always says, you cannot uh, avoid... Uh, 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 in the material world you cannot just uh, cut out everything and just you know uh, uh, just do bhakti you have to do your duties your prescribed duties so because of that you have to engage into this material world but uh, not get attached to it not uh, do sense gratification but in, instead create, keep the lord in the center and uh, from that uh, you know carry out main session yes and then You're the host, no? But at the same time, we should not be attached. Otherwise, we will, it will, we will suffer. Something like that. Mm. How many people are in your group, Arjuna? Only two, Urvaraj. Oh my goodness. Me and Bharat Prabhu. Oh, how did it happen like that? <laughs> I don't know. How, how many in other group? Four. Three of 
Anyway, are you managing okay? Yes, yes, we are doing okay. Okay, gives you more chance to think when you're only two. Okay, I'll, I'll, leave, okay. I'll leave you to it. Now, Yagna, I have a problem here. Yagna Prabhu, I have a... Yagna? Yes. I have a problem. I'm trying... Yes. I'm, I'm trying to change my room, but it, it's not allowing me. It just keeps putting me into room five. I don't know what you did, but... Okay. We have okay, to, I'm just... I made you the co-host. Okay, now it's okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Radhika. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. How are you doing? Are you ready? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Good. No, no. Sorry to interrupt, Maharaj. A little bit. Uh, you know, maybe just another three, four minutes. Three, four minutes? Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu, how are you doing? Hare Krishna. Are you able to come up with some th points to present? Yes, points are there, Maharaj. We are just trying to draw and then we are thinking that maybe we will not put, uh, we will not write it, but we will just talk about it. Okay. The statements. Okay, as you like. Yeah. How much more time you need? Almost there, Maharaj. It's we are not just... going to be nice drawing, Maharaj. Huh? <laughs> this is the drawing. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so it's not going to be nice drawing. <laughs> okay.
supposed to be in room three. Hare Krishna, Mahamur. Hare Krishna, how's it going? Have you almost finished? Um, no, Marge, we're just doing the first verse and then uh, 2.60. 67 and looking at 68 right now um, just getting some more ideas what are you going to do are you going to write or speak or talk drama or what so I drew something just the boat example okay um, 67 mm -hmm. so just uh, how karma sannyas uh, you know it doesn't really help but we can engage our senses in Krishna's service then um, you know, definitely it won't be swept away in the water, how the verse says. And for 68, we still have to, I still have to. <laughs> okay, we don't have a lot of time because we, have, we want to discuss everything. Okay, so Marge. try to finish off quickly. Yes, Marge. We'll, we'll just give them three more minutes, Prabhu. Okay, okay, Maharaj. So, if you want to go, you can go. Room. Yeah, uh, just two minutes, Prabhu. Two more minutes to finish off. Okay, Prabhu, I think you can close the rooms now. Okay, Maharaj. Okay, is everyone back? Yes, yes, Maharaj. All right. So, let's begin with group number one. You, please tell us when you begin your presentation, tell us which verse you're speaking on. And if you can, if you have the, if you have the book there, if you can read the verses, it's also good. Begin by reading the two, the verses you're presenting. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I will be representing uh, group number one. Um, we do not have a presentation, Maharaj, as uh, we, uh, we are not in laptop. So uh, uh, we will be uh, reading the verse. We are uh, reading from verse 2.60 and 61. 
So the translation for 6.0 is, Krishna's statement is, the senses are so strong and impetuous, O Arjuna, that they forcibly carry away the mind, even of a man of discrimination, who is endeavoring to control them. So uh, Prabhupada's statement immediately in the purport says that there are many learned sages, philosophers, and transcendentalists who try to conquer the state senses. But in spite of their endeavors, even the greatest of them sometimes fall victim to material sense enjoyment due to the agitated mind. So here uh, the mention is how difficult it is to control the mind uh, in spite of being uh, a, a great sage or a philosopher or a transcendentalist who have been practicing for many, many years. And uh, the example given in the purport is like um, uh, about Vishwamitra Muni and uh, how he was misled by Menaka and he was not able to control his senses and uh, he had to, uh, in spite of his severe penances and yoga practice for many, many years. And also this, this actually represents kar, uh, karma sannyas. Like, um, so on the contrary, like if we see um, here again, Prabhupada has mentioned in the purport about Yamuna Charya, a wonderful devotee and a great saint. So, uh, and uh, what Yamunacharya actually uh, mentions, he says, since my mind has been engaged in the service of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, and I have been enjoying an ever new transcendental humor, whenever I think of sex life with the women, my face at once turns from it and I spit at the thought. So, Yamunacharya has been able to engage his mind and other senses in the service of the Lord, and he is actually enjoying the... Uh, uh, transcendental bliss of actually serving the Lord with all his senses. So he is not at all attracted to the attraction of any women and uh, and he is actually able to actually turn away from that particular allurement. Or, so uh, so uh, this actually is actually um, more, uh, more of how a devotee uh, uh, behaves and how a devotee actually transcends all these uh, uh, path and actually he engages his senses and mind continuously in the uh, thought of Krishna. So, uh, 61, uh, Kuhan Prabhu will be explaining, uh, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, I'll be uh, explaining text 61, which is more to how Mataji explained, uh, confirming Sri Yamuna Chacharya's uh, statement. So, text 61, Tani Sarvani Samyaya Yukta Asita Matparaha so the translation for this is one who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me is known as a man of steady intelligence. So this is the translation for this text. Uh, an example that we can be given uh, to explain this text is that the pastimes of Durvasa Muni, where he picked a quarrel with Ambris Maharaj. He became unnecessarily angry uh, out of pride and therefore could not check his senses. But even though he was angry, Ambris Maharaj was not affected by this. He was not at all affected by, by this. Instead, what he did was he was just completely absorbed his mind, fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. So this is sh showcasing how a devotee should engage his senses, proper utilize of his senses. Instead of getting angry back at Durvasa Muni, he did not do that. Uh, so when... Uh, as, as an example that was given previously by Maharaj about the analogies of the snake and the snake charmer. So uh, from this uh, verse, we can see how Ambris Maharaj uh, controls his senses. Instead, we can also see another example how Durvasi, uh, Durvasa Muni who failed to control his senses uh, in this manner. Okay. So one who restrains his senses and fix, fix. You see, when they talk about restraining the senses, it sounds like Krishna's encouraging us to stop work. And because Krishna's talking about restraining the senses and just fixes, so it sounds like Krishna wants us to just sit and do nothing and just think of him. Is that possible? Uh, no, Maharaj, it's not possible. Why not? We should, 
because we are so soul who is act our senses are always active so instead of being uh, restraining our senses we should engage our senses in the service of the lord because we we cannot keep quiet something like that can't stay uh, static yeah difficult to stop but it's possible that certain people can do it they're able to sit and do nothing but before you can do that one has to have come to a level of purification one has to be very pure much purified and one should have no more material desires then one could sit and stop all work but without purification, one cannot do it. So that's an important point to note, that first we have to purify ourselves before we can sit and do nothing. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Yes? The point I'm, I'm exhausting you're saying. So by engaging the senses uh, in Krishna consciousness, in devotional service, sense becomes purified. Yes. By engaging the senses in Krishna, but certainly we will become purified. But we can engage our sen we can engage our mind in thinking of Krishna, and one may be able to stop work and just simply absorb the mind in thinking of Krishna. In fact, we had we heard Maharaj uh, Ambarish, you know, he's just thinking of Krishna. When Durvasa Muni attacked him, what did Maharaj Ambarish do? He just thought of Krishna. He didn't necessarily pray to Krishna to protect him, but he just re naturally remembered Krishna. Was he able to do that because he was engaged in service, worshipping the angels, engaging the senses and the service of the Lord? Well, certainly we know that he'd engaged, he'd done a lot of service, and he was accustomed to using all of his senses in the service of Krishna. So he'd achieved a lot of purification. So when the test came, when the test came, when Dervasa Muni challenged him, then it was natural for him to think of Krishna. Because he'd already purified his heart through service. Yeah? Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead. Group number two. Thank you, Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'll be representing from group two. So we have verses of uh, 2.62 and 2.63. 2.62, Dhyato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangas Teshu Pajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kama Krodha Vijayate. The translation to this verse is while contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops and from lust, anger arises. Uh, in the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada actually gives, one who is not Krishna conscious is subjected to material desires by contemplating the objects of the senses. As we cannot avoid this material world, uh, we have to live with it. So, we have to engage our senses. But the thing is, there's, there's always a difference that Srila Prabhupada used to say, like, uh, we we cannot really avoid this material world. We have to work. So when we when we uh, when our point is fixed uh, that we keep Lord in the center, and you know uh, when when everything that we do in this uh, life revolves around uh, Krishna, revolves around uh, that we fix onto the Lord, uh, we won't be really attached. So we're, because when we uh, when we get attached to things like. Uh, in the verse, they also say, uh, when we get attached to things, lust develops and uh, in turn, uh, the anger rises. So, uh, we cannot control our senses, but uh, when we surrender on to the Lord, there's, 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 uh, we, we become fixed towards that. Uh, we, we, uh, we act, I'm, I'm really sorry, Maharaj, I'm actually stammering while speaking, but... Uh, uh, when you become fixed, uh, really sorry. So there's there's another example where uh, in the same purport where uh, Shri Prabhupada talks about uh, Namacharya Shri Haridas Thakura, 
and uh, Sri Yamuna Charya, how these exhalated devotees could control the senses as they were on, uh, they were purified. They was on, they were on another level of uh, purification. They are all, so they could control the senses, which we cannot do at the present moment because we're still practicing in that in that point. A devotee and uh, in verse number sixty three also, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that um, when. Uh, A devotee always knows, like, there's an example uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada gives. Uh, whereas an impersonalist tries to avoid good eatables, a devotee knows that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer and that he eats all that is offered to him in devotional. So after offering good eatables to the Lord, Lord the devotees take the remnants called prasadam. Thus everything becomes spiritualized and there is no danger of downfall. So once a person, you know, gets, uh, has, uh, surrenders onto the Lord, and uh, uh, surrenders onto the Lord, and uh, you know, do, does everything in in uh, in terms of the Lord. Uh, he doesn't really have any ta attachment, and there is no a chance of sense gratification, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, what is the the main point of you were doing which verses? Verse number sixty-two and sixty-three, Maharaj. Okay. So they're dealing with it. It, it was more about how how the how one has to rest what happens when somebody restrains the senses, right? Yes, Maharaj. So we see Haridas Thakur, you know, he, he's ex you gave him as an example. What does he do? He doesn't do anything, right? What does he do? He just sits and chants all the time. Yes, Maharaj. And he's never disturbed. He's never attracted. It doesn't worry him. Yes, Maharaj. He can be in the cave with a snake. He doesn't worry about it because he's chanting the holy name. But if somebody else tries to do that, they restrain the senses. They still have material desires, you know. Oh, no, I can't be in this cave. There's a snake here. I've got to move. I have to find another cave. <laughs> you know. Will never become, never be peaceful. But one who is actually in transcendental consciousness, he can be peaceful anywhere. So, if one gives up work, the karma sannyasi, people may, some people they may go to chant the holy name, in a place. Unless they're very pure in their heart they're going to get disturbed. They're not going to be comfortable, they're not going to be satisfied. Material desires will, are not going to leave them. Right? If we go to the forest, our material desires will go with us. So, karma sannyas is not for people who have not purified their heart. At the end of life, one can sit down and just simply chant the holy name. But if we have not purified the heart, even at the time of death, it will be difficult. Material desires will still be there. They'll cause us to take birth again. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's hear group number three. are doing um, verse number 2.67 and 68. So 2.67 um, says, as a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. So Prabhupada is saying that um, unless, you know, all of our senses are engaged, um, even one of them is out, it's very difficult to be steady. So 
uh, we just tried to depict that in a drawing. So it's very like just a small boat there and acting in Karma Sanya as well. As uh, the other boat over here is a transcendental boat, which we have a captain, Arshila Prabhupada, and all the devotees. So uh, oh. engaging our senses, doing service, it's going to help us to go back to Godhead. So it's mm. a back to Godhead service oh. express. Oh, nice. And, <laughs> so <laughs> then in uh, the purport, uh, Prabhupada also mentions Amrish Maharaj, whose uh, senses you know, are always engaged in doing devotional service. So uh, the other groups have already uh, talked about that. And uh, 2.68 uh, continues on saying how it is important to restrain our senses by engaging all of them. Uh, so let me just read it out and then... Uh, yeah. So 2.68, therefore, mighty armed, one who says are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence. So um, here in Purport, Prabhupada talks like how it is just impossible for human endeavor to control their senses. So again, I drew in two different uh, diagrams. So one where we see on the uh, left-hand side is a devotee. Uh, first, let me go to the uh, right-hand side. Is uh, thinking it's very difficult to control our senses. So we think about watching a movie, eating food outside, opposite sex, and you know, um, and get angry, we cannot control the sleep. Everything is just so mismanaged. But just by going to a higher a taste or engaging ourselves in a superior um, force, and just engaging all of them in chanting or eating prasadam or uh, you know doing TT worship, reading books, um, it just you know it makes it so much easier to elevate ourselves and then uh, become a sadhaka, which Prabhupada uh, in, you know, introduces, which is a suitable candidate for liberation. So we accept a spiritual master and under the guidance uh, we can engage our senses and become a nice devotee. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. That's very good, yes. How to use the senses in the service of Krishna. So that's actually the job of the spiritual master, to keep the disciple engaged, give them Krishna conscious duties like Prabhupada in the beginning of the movement, he had everybody go on Sankirtan, that everybody should join the Sankirtan party. And then there was also book distribution, and Prabhupada wanted devotees to distribute books. And then some devotees were brought to India and then they had to get land and build temple, and different things Prabhupada organized to keep the devotees engaged, to keep them busy. Then farming projects and then restaurants, some different activities to keep the devotees engaged, you know. Never, never did Prabhupada say, oh, just sit down, just chant Hare Krishna. But like to see devotees always active. And, but Prabhupada also writes in his books, he said, at the end of life, you can come to the holy place and read the books of the Goswamis. He said, spend your life preaching Krishna consciousness, and then at the end of life, just sit and read the books of the Goswamis. <laughs> so, okay, very nice. Thank you very much. So next group, group number four. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, so we have been given the verse, uh, chapter 3, the verse 4 and verse 5. So I'll read the verse first, uh, this is text 4. Na karmanam anaramban anaram anaramba anaramban naishkarmyam purusos snute na cha sanyashan nad eva siddhim Samadhi Adhikachati Not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. So, uh, in this verse, actually Krishna is very clearly telling us that we should be uh, not uh, following the karma sannyas. And we should be having, uh, like we should be following the karma yoga. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is explaining that uh, the renounce order of life can be accepted when one has become purified. As Maharaj just 
little bit a little while ago explained that unless our senses are purified if we can if we try to make a show of becoming a sannyasi then we are merely creating uh, disturbance in the society that's what Prabhupada is saying so we draw a picture of a sannyasi here uh, and the sannyasi is actually uh, oh, okay. showing like he is doing he is doing meditation uh-huh. uh, he's thinking about something else uh-huh. so his, his senses are not in his control okay so that is that is merely creating disturbance and they are depending on the society for their needs rather than uh, helping the society becoming more Krishna conscious. In the, in the, in the purport, uh, there is a nice statement Prabhupada is making. He says, according to the empirical philosophers, simply by adopting sannyas or retiring from fruitive activities, one at once become as good as Narayan. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. It's very, very clearly stated here by Prabhupada that just by retiring, we are not going to become as good as Narayan. <clears throat> and in the second verse, which is verse 5, uh, it goes like this, Nahi kashit kshanam api jatu tisthati akarma krayate hi avasya karma sarva prakriti jair gune. The translation is, Everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. So, in the verse 4, Krishna is saying that like sannyas is uh, not recommended, it is better to do karma yoga. And then in the verse 5, Krishna is actually telling us that it is really not possible to uh, become not do anything for a, even for a moment. So basically we are all driven by the modes of material nature, just like the puppets. And we have to do something. So it is it is not possible for us to become you know, completely idle from doing anything. And that is why it is better to engage and into service of Krishna rather than becoming a sannyasi. And we have drawn a couple of pictures, some more, that one shows that like sometimes have, uh, a person becomes so lazy that he is just sleeping and he says that he is becoming a kind of a sannyasi, karma sannyasi. So karma sannyasi people also become lazy. And instead of helping, so like when, when there is a need, right now there is a need in, in, in COVID scenario that we should go out and serve prasadam or help people. Instead, if somebody is just saying that, oh, I'm, I'm just a karma sannyasi, I'm not going to do anything, then that, that would not really be good. That's what we had in mind. Oh, very nice. Yes. Very good points. I appreciate this, that uh, the karma sannyasi is not really contributing anything to the world. He's only thinking of his own situation. Even if he is pure in the heart, there's no benefit to others. But as you say, if people go out there and distribute prasadam and so on, then they're giving mercy, they're help, offering help and assistance to others. And that's really the business of devotees, to show compassion. There's no compassion in just our own purification. And we did see also, you are talking about sannyasa. So, in, in the early years of ISKCON, Srila Prabhupada did give sannyas to a number of young people, a number of young men. And it was, of course, very difficult for them to maintain their vow of sannyas. For one reason, you know, they had accepted sannyas at an early age, you know, in their twenties or like that. And uh, they were not really pure at heart, but they may have had good intentions, but they found it very difficult to maintain. So nowadays, of course, over the years in ISKCON, and because it's not very good for people to have sannyas and then to give it up, so in the more recent times, you know, they have, we don't give sannyas to such young people, 
But we, and they, the people who do become sannyasis, they have to first purify their heart a lot. And purification comes about by their preaching and by their studying of the scriptures and like that. And this way then they're, they're more ready for the sannyas, for the vow of sannyas. And in, in ISKCON also, sannyas is for preaching, it's for doing propaganda work, it's not for sitting down. Just like one devotee, one sannyasi was there in Vrindavan and he said, Prabhupada, I just want to stay here in Vrindavan and chant Hare Krishna. Prabhupada said, your duty is to travel and give Vrindavan to others. Vrindavan is not just for you to sit there and enjoy it, but you should think to give Vrindavan to others. And so Prabhupada's mood was like that. He was making people sannyas with the idea that they would give Krishna consciousness. Not that they would just sit and do nothing. One time Prabhupada gave sannyas to a number of young men in Mayapur and one of his friends was there. And so the man said to Prabhupada, he said, oh, they're all very young. But, and Prabhupada looked at the man and said, if they are old men, what can they do? <laughs> so Prabhupada was saying, you know, better they take sannyas while they're young because they have energy, they can do something. But if you wait till old age, you, what can they do? And now, Prabhupada, of course, was the exception that even in his old age, he could go to America. At the age of 70, going to America is unbelievable, inconceivable. That is very special. But we shouldn't try to imitate that. Prabhupada encouraged, is it better you preach now while you're young? and your old age, you can sit down and chant Hare Krishna. All right, final group, group five. Just one more thing. Can I ask you a question? Or yes, a yes, Prabhu. Um, therefore, the sannyas in our movement, the Krishna conscious movement, uh, it's kind of different. They're not like the karma sannyas. They're not like what sannyas? The karma sannyas. Oh, def karma definitely karma. not. I said that. I said the duty of. The sannyasis, their job is to make propaganda work, to pro make propaganda for the Krishna consciousness movement, to go out, go out and preach. Yes. Yeah, not so at all. Karma sannyas is nowhere applicable in our movement. Karma sannyas? No, we, we, we don't encourage that in our movement. No. Yes. Unless somebody is maybe critically ill, you know, maybe he's a sannyasi and his health is gone and, you know, he doesn't have long left. And in his old age, Prabhupada did say in the old age, you can sit down and study the books of the Goswamis at the end of life. But you have to have dedicated your whole life, used your whole life in the service of Krishna. And then at the old, in the old age, at the end of life, you can sit down in the holy place and chant and read. Okay? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, we are from Group 5. Yes, Prabhuji. We are representing the Bhagavad Gita, Shlok number 3.6. So here the translation is, one who restrains the senses and organs of action, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. So here Prabhupada is saying like uh, we are not to become a pretender or show mortal spiritualism. We need to really work and engage in Krishna consciousness. Uh, like some pretenders or propagata propagate their propaganda like uh, mediate on a single point and everybody will sit together. So, but there is no Krishna over there, no no engagement of service. So they all are bogus gurus. Uh, that is a false philosophy that other gurus are teaching. But here Prabhupada has focused on the like Karam Yoga. We need to engage ourselves by doing bhakti and other engagement activities, not sitting idle and speaking only one mantra and not performing any activity. So we do not have to become a show bottle or a teacher, uh, cheaters, uh, uh, cheater guru. That is not recommended over here. So we will need to engage ourselves in the um, bhakti process like preaching as you said, distributing books. Uh, that is called a karam yoga. We not we do not have to go for a karam sannyas. And coming to the next uh, three point seven, 
Here, on the other hand, he who controls the senses by the mind and engages his organs in the work of devotion without attachment is by far superior. So here it has been highlighted like uh, we need we do not need to uh, devote our life for earning by we are doing devotional service so that we can earn something and make our life progress or feed our children, feed our, feed our family. That is not the motto of performing devotional service. We need to engage our activities in devotion without attachment, like uh, offering all the fruits in the service of the Lord and the Guru. Whatever we get, we need to offer out to our Guru and Lord Krishna. That is our purpose of life. And for getting the self-realization, we, we need to remain in the ashram that we are. We do not need to take a sannyasa, like if we are working in an office or we are a businessman, we must be performing our daily activities and but giving the proofs to the Krishna and the Guru. So that will be so then we can become self-realized. Otherwise if we uh, earning money and on by on the sake of Krishna consciousness we are uh, funding our children, our business, that is the wrong way. We need to uh, surrender to the Lord, our everything. Or oh, even our wife, children, family members to be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna and work together. And here the example is given no of a sincere sweeper. A sweep on the street is far better than a chart pattern, mediator who mediates only for the sake of making a living. So we not we do not to have work for our making a living. We need to work for Krishna for his service. We coming to next 3.8. Perform your prescribed duty for action is better than inaction. A man cannot even maintain his physical body without work. Here again it has been stressed like karma yoga is more superior than karma sanya. So we need to work even to maintain our body. So there is no point of sitting idle and taking sannyas from everything. And like Arjuna also here it mentioned like he was a military general. So Lord engaged him in fighting. He refused to sit idle and become a beggar. So he Lord says that he should fight for me and offer the results to me. It is my order. We need to work under the instructions of the Lord and the Guru. Renunciation is not uh, recommended by Prabhupada. Uh, only the renunciation of fruit is recommended. That it should be offered to the Lord. And we should not have to become a, uh, artificially spiritual. We should be in real from inside. We should clean our heart. We should uh, purify our sense, senses by engaging in the service of the Lord. Uh, we should engage in preaching work, uh, book distribution, engaging our neighbors in bhakti, asking them to come to Mangala to join the functions, uh, join Mahashmi, go Purnima. We need to collate everyone with us, uh, making Krishna as a center. And remain in our ashram that we are. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thanks, Mahal. Very nice. I think covered everything there. Okay. So I'll just go back here to the. Are, are you able to see the slideshow? Hare, no. Oh, okay, I have to open the screen. Can you see it now? Yes, you're there. Okay, good. Yeah. So we'll just just to finish off here. So. Uh, Certainly we come, oh, pressed the wrong one there, we right. have to go through these slides. Okay, so, analogies. Okay. <laughs> okay, just the objectives here. Let's see. First of all, understanding. We had a look at Krishna's response to Arjuna's question. The symptoms of a self-realized soul. The stita pragna, right? Self-realized soul, stita pragna. One who is in complete knowledge. Or a self-realized soul. So Arjuna wanted to know how does he speak and what is his language and how does he sit, how does he walk. So we talked, we showed 
and you've been explaining also how Krishna responds, Krishna explains about the self-realized soul. How does he sit? He will restrain the senses. He doesn't get involved in acts of sense gratification. But he will work for Krishna. He will use his senses in the service of Krishna. And he will be active in using, using the senses. It's not that we deny the senses, we just have to know how to use them. So the proper consciousness, proper attitude should be there. We want to serve Krishna, satisfy Krishna. So the Sthita Dear Muni, how does he regard happiness and distress? Does anyone remember? How does he regard happiness? What does he think? He thinks that it could be worse in distress and when he happiness. He thinks that it's a mercy of Krishna. He thinks, I don't deserve so much happiness, Krishna is just encouraging me. And when he's in distress, he thinks, I, should, I could be suffering much more, but Krishna has reduced it. Krishna is only giving me a little suffering. Right? So that's how the Stita Dir Muni, how he regards happiness and distress. He sees it all as Krishna's arrangement, Krishna's protecting him. Then personal application, general principles from our experience of Param Drisva, getting a higher taste in Krishna consciousness. That we we do find that when we really make an effort to serve Krishna and we put aside our own bodily needs, we forget about, you know, having to eat, eat three meals a day, and having to sleep seven or eight hours a night. We can, we can minima, minimize these things. We, can, we forget all about the, the, what we usually do in terms of eating and sleeping because we're getting so much pleasure from Krishna consciousness. When there's a kirtan going on, if it's going on like maybe 24 hours, a lot of kirtan, nice kirtan, you don't think about it, what time it is. I know when we have kirtan mela here in Mayapur, and you know, somebody like the Madhava will come in, and Madhava Prabhu is a wonderful kirtanier, and he has a wonderful group with him doing kirtan. And they will all come in and help him in the kirtan. And people will, they, they, you know, usually the temple will be empty by 9 o'clock. But Madhava will go and kirtan, it will go till 11, 12 o'clock. And the people just forget about the time. Because there's so much in Krishna consciousness, they're getting the taste of the holy name. And working for Krishna, we have to get the taste. If we don't have that taste, then we get the taste for sense gratification. Our lust, our material desires will expand and increase. So we have to be very careful. We really want to get that taste. And we have to make some effort sometimes in the beginning. Sometimes we think, oh, I don't know, I don't want to be up so late. Oh, I don't want to do this fasting, I don't want... But if you're getting a taste, it's worth it. If you're getting the real taste of Krishna consciousness, it's more important than the material things, the ordinary things we do. And now we've been talking about why karma yoga is superior to karma sannyas. That karma sannyas requires a lot of purification. And you have to be really qualified for something like that, and most people are not. And there's also no benefit to others. If one becomes a karma sannyasi, it's good for himself maybe, he's not doing any harm to others, but he's not doing any good either. But if we do karma yoga, that's good for others also. We can do karma yoga for the pleasure of Krishna, and by serving Krishna we're benefiting the whole world. So Prabhu, uh, there are several verses there and we've spent the last half hour or more looking at these different verses and 
the different points about them. And the relevance of karma yoga being superior to karma sannyas in relation to Arjuna's situation on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So how does this apply to Arjuna's situation on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? Arjuna, he was thinking to live by begging. He was thinking, you know, I don't want to fight. I don't want to work. I don't, I just, I'll just live by begging. He says, better to live by begging than at the lives of great souls. So Arjuna was actually thinking that karma sannyas is better than karma yoga. Arjuna was worried about sinful reactions, but Krishna told him, you're going to get sinful reactions if you do karma sannyas, because karma sannyas you're doing for your own self. You're going to live by begging, you're going to get karma. You take karma from people, you go begging. You take, you're begging for your own sense gratification, food for your own belly. You're going to get karma. But if you fight as buddhi yoga, detached from the result, there's no reaction. Detached work. So this is the point. So Arjuna's situation, karma yoga is better than karma sannyas. And our own practice of Krishna consciousness, and I think you've covered that very nicely, that certainly in our own practice of Krishna consciousness, we don't want to try to become a karma sannyasi and just sit and do nothing and just chant the holy name. Well, we do chant the holy name, we, do chant, have, we have to chant every day, but we have to do a lot more than just chant the holy name, right? We're also working for Krishna, we have so many services, we have centers to maintain, and we do fundraising, and we have so many activities in Krishna consciousness. Food distribution is going on a lot, and uh, book distribution, of course, is one of the priorities of our movement, and preaching in general, that's our business as devotees. But karma sannyas, Oh no, I'm just chanting the holy name, don't bother me. Mm, that's not suitable, that's not what Prabhupada wants, and it's not suitable for our own practice of Krishna consciousness. But the more we give the mercy, the more we get the mercy. And so that's a nice thing to remember. If we try to give Krishna consciousness, then certainly we'll get a lot of mercy. A final quote from Prabhupada. So the yogis and other methods, they are trying to control the senses by force. I shall go to the Himalayas. I shall not see any more beautiful women. I shall close down my eyes. These are forceful. You cannot control your senses. There are many instances. You don't require to go to Himalaya, you just remain in Los Angeles city and engage your eyes to see Krishna. You are more than a person who has gone to Himalayas. <laughs> You'll forget all other things. This is our process. You don't require to change your position. You engage your ears for hearing Bhagavad Gita as it is. You'll forget all nonsense. You engage your eyes to see the beauty of the deity, Krishna. You engage your tongue for tasting Krishna Prasad. You engage your legs to come to this temple. You engage your hands to work for Krishna. You engage your nose to smell the flowers offered to Krishna. Then, when, where your senses will go? He is captivated all round. The perfection is sure. You don't require to control your senses forcibly. Don't see, don't do it, don't do it. No, you have to change the engagement. Prabhupada's lecture, Bhagavad Gita 2, 62 to 72, in Los Angeles, December 19, 
66 or 68. So very nice, very nice uh, quotation here by Srila Prabhupada from this section which we've been covering about the importance of using our senses. You know, sometimes people show this, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. But if we use everything in the service of Krishna, then there's no place for evil. But if you simply try to stop the senses, the mind is full of evil. And then the senses will force us to act. All right, any questions? Anybody? Any comment or question? No? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, I've been having some real difficulty with my internet, and I don't even know uh, what's your holy message to me. The first session, my internet has given me some trouble. I didn't get to see the introduction. Even when you were explaining uh, Arjuna's dilemma, the whole episode I missed, I have to relook at the TV. So I'm trying to resolve the internet at the moment, but please, at least let me get, to, get an opportunity to know uh, the name at least of your holiness. I'm sorry? I, I'm not able to hear you so clearly. You want to know what? I want to know your name, Mara. I didn't get it until now. You want to know... What did I say? No, I wanted to know your name. Oh, my name. Oh, my name. <laughs> oh, my God. No, yeah. I'm, okay. My name is... Uh, my sannyas name is Bhakti Vigna Vinasha Narasimha. Thank you very much, Maharaj. I feel now that I'm, I'm able to go in this class. I'm lost so far. Well, you know, we have been recording it and it will be available. Yeah, I'll look back at the recording. Yeah, okay. So. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Vrinda Ki Jai. So we'll see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.